by making a cup of coffee. Awesome. So I'm gonna run, come back. Okay. Run. One moment, please. So, hey, so, so I, I was reading the internet today. Oh, the internet. Yes, I do. <laughs> Is that still going on? I st <laughs> and uh, two, two semi-interesting stories stuck out to me. Really? Okay. Yes. Um, I, I'd like your thoughts. One. Right. One. I'm trying to decide which to lead with because they're put both. Big, put a big one on the screen all of a sudden. Right. One is clearly more interesting than the other. <laughs> well, there may become more you, interesting. I'm not telling you how to good, do good TV, but lead with that one. <laughs> you decide, people. You, that's right. I report, you decide. Right. So All right. This, go ahead. This story um, with research out of the Ohio State University, oh. I might be familiar with them, right. was, well, about <laughs> was about equality work, was about people's perception of, of uh, restaurant menus and the font of those menus. Okay. Which like from a trustworthiness perspective or a... in how, um, yeah, let's say trustworthy, how likely they were to interact with the, with a brand okay. um, through right. social media. Um, and so the initial st finding that I was looking at is not too surprising. So they, they did it. Um, they made a fictitious restaurant uh, for this first first piece of it mm -hmm. and it was like based on a wholesome natural organic healthy style restaurant okay and so, and so they studied two menus one with like a handwritten font and one with more like helvetica just a standard computer looking font mm -hmm. and i guess not surprisingly to me the handwritten font was more well received people connected with it it, it better uh, embodied the message from the restaurant that it was more um, connected to the user, to the customer, and uh -huh. healthier and less uh, mechanical. Uh -huh. you know. Please tell me they also did the same study with a sports bar as. So they did with like a fast food restaurant. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Now we're doing some science. Yes. And it was, the difference was not as noticeable. So people basically just didn't care right. when it was a fast food restaurant. So whatever gains you get from that fancy warm language and fonts is lost because people can see through it because it's right. It's right. Um, so again, not the first part didn't really surprise me that much, but the second part a little bit. Um, and when I say fast food, not necessarily maybe McDonald's, but someplace that's not focused on health. Right, right. So it could just be a local like bar, bistro, or something. Right. Okay. All right. I was gonna. I was like waiting to see what brand you were gonna go. With. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <clears throat> Chipotle. All right, there. I said. Chipotle. <laughs> yeah, that's what I wanted you to say. <laughs> um. Yeah. So that was uh one of the uh, or, or gas the station tacos. Gas station tacos. Why didn't I lead with that? So the other article I read was about gas station tacos. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and by read, I mean wrote. <laughs> <laughs> by read, I meant eaten. <laughs> I meant read. You know what? I'm going to get some tacos. I'll be right back. You got your water. I'm getting tacos. You wait, buddy. I'd like to talk about these gas station tacos. Any other questions or thoughts on no, the I... controversial menu study? Uh... Non-handwritten fonts? No, no. Here's I a question. See, I see some of those handwritten font things go a little too far where it's really hard to discern what the menu says. So That was actually one of the comments yeah. in here um, from a real business owner, restaurateur. He's like, you got to make it casual, but not too fancy and has to be legible. Yeah. So here's usable, a question for you. Almost like it's usable, useful, and satisfying. Yeah. Where have I heard that before? I think you just made that up. That's the ISO definition for usability. Come on. 
Right. ISO 9421. I've got that tattooed on my shoulder. You know that. <laughs> yeah, I just I just can't read it. Right. <laughs> it's in Chinese. I don't know what it says. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's 99241. All right. Anyway, sorry, just geeking out on on international standards organization designations. Yeah, I don't know you. Um, <laughs> thought exercise. Yes. Do Wait, you hold know? On, hold on. This isn't really a thought exercise. No, I was I was waiting for the graphic to come up. Thought exercise. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine the production of this thing. So go ahead. Thought right. exercise. Do you know how many different fonts there are? Yes. How many? Like. Three? <laughs> a billion. I knew so from the way you asked that question that it would be a lot or a little. <laughs> You're so right. Uh, yeah, my guess is like a half million. Hmm. Why? I have absolutely no idea. I just thought of it. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say like, well, it was a thought experiment because I wanted to know what you know because I noticed this article next to this other article and they were related and and it turns out Way there's like 273,546 different fonts yeah you give me way too much credit according to google there <laughs> are perhaps 300,000 fonts in the world <laughs> that's free range not in captivity oh right yeah uh, well i was uh, so you were you were like two thirds not even two -thirds. i was not closest without going over no. Is, is basically what that comes down to. But one was closer to a billion, or three was closer <laughs> to a billion. That's true. So I was closer. <laughs> Do I win something? No. Yes, you can continue hosting this <laughs> very interesting discussion. All right. So um, thought experiment. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Put a, put a sting right here. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I need to hold up. Piece of paper. <laughs> That's we'll have some like really low rent graphics where they're just like little little cards, and we'll right. just like hold on, <laughs> and then hold it up. <laughs> there we go. Cut. It just one says outro music, and it's like no, no, the wrong card. All right. Yeah. <sighs> anyway. Yeah, anyway. You were saying you two articles. Yeah. So this other article. Mm. You can decide if it's more or less interesting than the first. Okay. All right. This is the interactive portion of the talk. Right. <laughs> Please vote Please with read your buzzers in front of you. Read out loud. <laughs> um, there is an experiment going on at, uh, where is this? I believe it's in Los Angeles at Cedar sinai Hospital. Mm -hmm. Did you read about this? They are putting Alexa devices in hospital rooms. Yes, I saw that this morning. Yes, you saw the same article. And I actually have opinions on this i cannot believe it I, so you read the same article so yeah just why don't you quickly explain summarize the article for me so test you to make sure you actually read it <laughs> right so cedars mount sinai in los angeles is putting alexa devices in hospital rooms <laughs> the end <laughs> so so what but, I but the point is to for them to be able to be like you know i can't move or i shouldn't move and say hey alexa please give me more pain meds or I need to go to the bathroom or whatever. And then that message will somehow be relayed through the, through the Alexa system to the nursing station or whatever. Yep. I'm like, well, okay. So first off, uh, this was shared in a, in a Slack that I'm in. And, you know, as you and I were talking before we <clears throat> started recording that, um, how Slack will put the URL and then it does the unfurl and it shows an image and stuff. At first I thought it was an onion article um, because it, it, the, the image that came with it looked, and I'll, and I'll, I'll put the image yes. uh, or here. I don't know. Um, image looked a little too staged huh. and it just looked like an onion thing. Like why would they put Alexa devices in there? Because, like, why would a hospital think that was okay, given that HIPAA is so important? Mm. And, you know, even even my phone, brought to you by Google, mm. is is listening to me right now. 
Right. Because I can say, okay, Google. And, you know, it's locked, but it turn it's listening. Right. So that's what the Alexa does too. What right. is it doing with that information? Well, that's been controversial for other applications because they'll say it listens right. but doesn't record until you get that keyword. But obviously, they've already proven that's not always the case. And the, and the airlines that have the cameras in the back seats of right. the, the entertainment things aren't watching you at all. Right. Oh, we didn't turn them on. Right. I know. I know. Not disagreeing. Yeah. So it's where do you draw the line between accessibility and privacy, I guess? Well, I think where I draw the line is what problem are you trying to solve? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not saying it's the best thing, but we've done pretty well with having the, the call button. Um, and I recognize that not everybody can, can press a button, right? but why is it an Alexa device and not a startup that is essentially white labeling a hardware and software system to the hospital where the information stays in the hospital? Right. Um, yeah. To me, I almost feel like they're leveraging Alexa to prove the concept. And I would hope they didn't, wouldn't roll that out. Did that, was that in the article that they're doing that? I don't think it was, but that's how I, I mean, I guess it does say pilot program. Right. But. Because one of the powers of this, at least that I gleaned from the article, the advantage over a button is that it can, and you mentioned this, route the need to the right person. So if they just need help getting to the restroom, they're not going to call a doctor. Right, right. And we or certainly a, want, wouldn't want to make a push button device that had, you know, becomes a remote. Like the right. TV remotes have gotten out of control with all the buttons on them. Right. Or have like four different buttons to call either the nurse, the doctor, or the, the, um, uh, I forget the other name, the orderly yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I just, I'm not against it conceptually. I, what the problem I have with it is that it's Amazon Alexa. Mm. Yep. Um, as opposed to a voice interactive device that is not Amazon. And then the other problem I have with it is voice. So th there's two things like, you know, I know voice will get better over time, but right now it isn't great. The The amount of times I've yelled at my phone because it can't set a timer for 15 minutes and sets it for 50 minutes instead. Hmm. Uh, even like it gets worse the more I enunciate. It's almost like it's designed for mumbling. So it doesn't always get things right. Definitely. Um, but also just the, because there's, it's, it's almost like command line interacting with your computer. You have to know the architecture of the interface mm -hmm. in your brain. So the patients have to then be trained to say this, this, or this before they say the request or otherwise there's gotta be some trigger. Cause I can imagine like a family visiting someone in the hospital and the kids are like, Alexa, play this song, Alexa, you know, and it's like, is that what it's really for? I don't know. Yeah. It's a pilot program and that's great. I, I think it's got a lot of opportunity, put it mm -hmm. that way, um, especially for patients with mobility issues um, who maybe don't have family coming to visit them and are basically alone in a room for 23 hours a day. Yeah. Um, it does say that the it's through a startup using the devices, probably because they just do the software. So mixed feelings. Fair enough. Mixed feelings and, you know, as, as was the case in point with a client recently admitting that they don't know if they were asking the right questions when they were doing the research themselves mm -hmm. and what biases are in place with this pilot program that are, might lead them to faulty assumptions and paths that don't make sense to follow. Hopefully they're learning as they go through this pilot. Increments. Increments. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'll flash uh, that image up on the screen. Yeah. And I know the image you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Greg. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that's what I got today. All right. Well, that was a good one. I like that. One. I'm, the second one was better than the first one. Ah, I knew it. <laughs> I, think you, I think you purposely messed with me. You were like, 
he cares more about healthcare than menus. And then I'd be like, actually, you know, I love good food. So, right. It's a flip of the coin, my friend.